Hi, Armstrong Pame here. So I'm going to share a little bit more about myself and a little bit more about my work for those of you who might be more interested in knowing about me, not only about my professional life, not only about my official work as such. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, I'll share a little more about uh, my personal side of the story. Besides being one of the best IS officer in India, who is the real Armstrong Pame? Well, I continue myself to call the village boy because whenever I am given any opportunity, the first thought goes back to my village and to see how can I bring changes in the lives of these villagers. My equation of for anything goes back to my village. So I always call myself as a village boy who earnestly longs to bring certain changes and betterment in the lives of the people. I am a simple village boy as I continue to call myself. What are the perks and responsibilities of being an IS officer? Being an IS officer, definitely you have a lot of opportunities being given to you, not necessarily in terms of uh, the finances, not in terms of the, uh, you know, the facilities that you're given, but I want to tell you that we are provided well to live a comfortable life, though not a luxurious life. You are given a good salary. You can take care of your family. And not only that, you can certainly help certain people in need. Not beyond your, you know, don't try to help beyond your certain capacity, beyond your capacity as such. But uh, we are certainly paid uh, also well. And then, you know, you are given a uh, good place to live, you know, quarters to live. So, I would say we, our needs are taken care of. Let me be very specific. Our needs are taken care of, not our wants. So, and also the perks, I would say the best part is you have lots of responsibility, which definitely uh, comes along with the position that you hold. Along with this, you have certain authorities and this if we use it wisely, you get a lot of respect in the society. Who doesn't want respect and recognition in the society? Let me be frank. And being in the IAS, you definitely get all of this attention. And as a responsible citizen, as a responsible officer, I want to make sure that this responsibility, this authority that comes along, I want to utilize it to the best possible to impact the lives of people for whom I am meant to serve. So that's, I would say, briefly the perks and the responsibility that comes as an IS officer. How do you manage your personal life with such hectic schedule? Well, uh, I may not be the best person to answer this because I believe I've not been able to balance my uh, personal life very well. You know, uh, even while I was posted in my home district as a DM, my mother gets to see me for less than, what, three hours in a day? Because I wake up at uh, 6.30, 7 o'clock, I go for running, come back and have food together with her. I go to office at 9.30, 10. I come back only at 7 o'clock. She would already be asleep, you know. She would just come out to say hi, Sometimes he wouldn't wake up also. So, and now I have two boys, two, uh, two kids. I get to see them for about two hours a day when they are very active. In the morning, I wake up, see them. I go to office at 9.30, come back at 7, 7.30. They're already tired. They're ready to go to bed. So, uh, well, I cannot say that I'm the best person to be able to balance and maintain, uh, you know, the personal and family life. But uh, what I can probably tell you is that, you know, uh, my family knows that what I'm doing is doing 
do impact the life of the people in a positive way. They are very supportive of whatever works that I do. Even on weekends, in fact, weekends are the best time where I go out and you know meet young people, meet people whom I feel I can uh, encourage, like giving this talk. I just came back from Allahabad today. Last night, I was able to speak to a group of about 2,500 people. So on weekends, I take these opportunities to reach out to more people. My family is glad that, you know, I'm able to impact positively the people around me. So that's how I would say balancing life. I don't know how good it is, but I think that's a part of me trying to live life to the fullest. Is there any specific incident occur or any decision you took during your journey that you regret now? Well, I cannot exactly recall because there has been too many things. Uh, decision that I have taken. Well, uh, maybe one instance particularly. Uh, there were two or three boys studying in their t class 12 in JNV in Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, uh, you know, Nobodia. They bashed up some of the girl students of their class. They were beaten up so badly that these girl students have to be admitted in hospital. So their parents came and requested me not to rusticate them. I think I took an extreme decision to rusticate them to, as a chairman of the school. I say nothing doing because the injury was too much. I took the decision to expel them. I kind of regret because these boys uh, decided not to continue their studies. So I was thinking the other way, you know, had I given them another chance, they would have at least continued and given their class to have exam. Or the other side could be they could have taken that opportunity again to best up their classmate girls. But yeah, something was telling me that I should have given them another chance. So just another incident, you know, just I thought, you know, since you're asking if I regret any of the decisions that I took, yeah, I think, uh, you know, if given another chance, I would have said, okay, this is your last warning. So I think that decision could have been changed. Is there any work that is still pending on your to-do list which you want to do during the course of your employment as an IS officer? They would have at least continued and given your class to have exam. Or the other side could be they could have taken that opportunity again to best up their classmate girls. But yeah, something was telling me that I should have given them another chance. So just another incident, you know, just I thought, you know, since you're asking if I regret any of the decisions that I took, yeah, I think, uh, you know, if given another chance, I would have said, okay, this is your last warning. So I think that decision could have been changed. Is there any work <coughs> that is still pending on your to-do list? which you want to do during the course of your employment as an IS officer? Wow, there are so many things that our country gi is giving an opportunity to people like me to do. Oh, there are so many countless things everywhere I look around. How oh, uh, There are endless things to do. Today I was in Allahabad in a place called Sangam where the Three River meets. Just briefly stopped by after coming back from a boat ride. There were three, four small girls playing with those mud. I asked them, why didn't you go to school? Are you going to school? They say, no. We went to school once, but teacher parate nahi hai, so school jane ke liye gaya. I was shocked. No, you should go to school. I was telling them, how many of such children are there? There are coffee. Hey, so I look around and actually they were right. There were so many children who were not going to schools. This is another opportunity. There are so many more children who need to go to a proper school. So I think, you know, one thing that I feel we're blessed to be in India is there are so many things that you can do. So if you talk about the list of what I still want to do, 
there are too many things that this platform is not sufficient to describe the things that I want to do. Top of my head, uh, I think um, education is the thing that we really, really need to focus on. Because, for example, that those four girls, they're not attending any school now. Ten years down the line, these girls will be touching, you know, what, 18, 19, 20. What will they be? We're living in a very fast-changing world. You know, the age of computer, the age of technology. What would these small girls be doing then? You know, so we need to hurry up and take all of these measures to make sure that we build a stronger society, educated society. Education, I feel, is a top on my list. And of course, the health. So many people continues to uh, die every day for one of better health facilities. Not that the government is not doing, no, but we need to look forward to do even more. Just last night, I was coordinating with uh, some uh, district collectors in remote parts of the northeastern states because I have few friends who already have the ICU equipments like ventilators, the oxygen concentrators, and others they are already willing to supply. As a DM, I already installed 10 bedded ICU facilities through their help. They want to reach out to more districts. So I, uh, five districts, they're ready to do in the next two weeks' time. They wanted me to connect to many more rural districts. So I was reaching out to them. So health is another sector that we really have to focus on. Today, if you meet a 15-year-old version of yourself, what advice would you like to give him? So as a 15-year-old boy, I was very passionate still. I was, I remember, I think I was in my 10, 10, reading class 10. I was an angry young man, very ambitious. I remember uh, being from a poor family. We never actually get to even wear a new pair of shoes, new uniform. We always have to borrow or, you know, take from those people who had finished their you know, uh, their studies, I uh, mean, their class. I remember my mom, after every final year exam, she has to go to the neighbor's house to take old books, you know, some old uniforms. But nonetheless, we were very ambitious. So I would have said, you know, the same old arm strong, continue to be passionate, continue to do well and burn with the eagerness and the zeal to bring changes and to do the best that you can be. If Pami sir was not an IS officer today, what would he have been? Actually, I've never thought of that situation had I not been an IS officer because uh, the determination was so strong. You know, as a boy in third standard, you already had fathomed that dream that you want to be an IS officer. I could not think of any other professions apart from that. But I'm telling you, had I not been an IS officer, I think, you know, I would have given my best in whatever professions that I landed up in. Even if I ended up as a, a cobbler, I think I would have made a suit to be competing with the Jimmy Chow's suits. I would have given my best. I would have given my 110%. Uh, I, I, I don't say that I would have done, uh, you know, extremely well, but I would for sure be giving my 100% wherever I am. Certainly, the competition in UPSC has grown with time. May it be on the level of education or syllabus. Yet students look up to IS like you and aspire to be like same. So what would be one important piece of advice from your side to them? See, people say that the level of competition has gone up. Was competition less in my time? No, never. In fact, I would say that when we were writing way back some like 15 years ago, 2007, 2008, 
it was even tougher. I would say that because we had what? Two optionals for mains, one optional subject for prelims. You think it was easier for us? I studied physics, but I had to take up entirely two new subject, public administration. I never knew that this subject existed. Only when I stood in the line to take a, a admission for the coaching. In fact, I was supposed to take admission to, uh, for this psychology because people say it is a great subject. Someone standing in front of me, my number was 400 in the line, you know, to take coaching, uh, admission for the coaching. She was telling me, you know, this subject called public administration, it is very relevant for the service. It is easier to write this exam with this subject. You know, I changed my mind. I took admission for public administration. You think that was easy? It was tough. So when people say the system has changed and now it is tougher, I think that is not right. It was equally tough then. It was equally tough now. Not because the questions are tough, but it's the level of competition that remained very high. The pass percentage continues to be less than, you know, 0.1% or even less. And then now if you look at it, in this 0.1% of success, 10 lakhs people writing, 1,000 people get through the service. Out of 1,000 people, only 180, in my time, 120 made it to the IS. You know, so the ratio gets even more difficult and skewed. So competition was tough, competition is still tough. So, but it is not impossible to crack, definitely. Yes, I would say uh, certain percentage of luck also plays. But yes, your hard work really, really matters. So for those of you who are listening to my speech and planning to write this exam, I would say give your best. I know many of you must have heard this a thousand times from many speakers, from many uh, you know, uh, successful people and uh, people who have failed. I know it's tough. That's why the fun is that you know once you get through this, the fun of being successful is there, immense. I live, I'm living my dream every day because I believe I've got through this very, very tough exam. So continue to give your best. That's my wishes to all of you. Please come and join me in this service to serve our nation together to make our nation a stronger and a prosperous country. So folks, through this little sharing of mine, I hope I'm able to give a little perspective into my life's journey, the difficulties that I went through, the joy of being in the service, and the vision that I look forward in the days to come. I look forward to seeing all of you in different parts of uh, time and space that we journey together. Thank you and God bless you. Hello aspirants. हमें से बहुतों का सपना है आईएएस ऑफिसर बनना लेकिन आईएएस बनने की ये जो जर्नी है ना ये बहुत महंगी है और इसलिए बहुत एस्पिरेंट्स ने हमें रिक्वेस्ट किया कि क्या जोश टॉक्स एस्पिरेंट्स को फाइनेंशियली हेल्प कर सकता है उनकी जर्नी में तो इसीलिए जोश टॉक्स ने कांटेक्ट किया एमके यादव सर को एमके यादव सर यूपीएससी के एक बहुत ही फेमस टीचर हैं उनकी एक सिलेक्टेड कैंडिडेट रितिका मैम जिनका 2018 में एआईआर 88 आया था उन्होंने एक जोश टॉक भी दी है उनके और बहुत से स्टूडेंट्स ने जोश टॉक दी है जो कुछ ही दिनों में रिलीज होंगे तो हमने एमके यादव सर से बात की और उन्हें रिक्वेस्ट किया कि क्या वो जोश की फैमिली के लिए एक बहुत ही बड़ा सा डिस्काउंट दे सकते हैं क्योंकि अब प्रीलिम्स 2023 भी आने वाला है और हमें बहुत ही ज्यादा खुशी है इस बात की कि एमके यादव सर मान गए वो जोश की फैमिली को अपने हर प्रोडक्ट पर 20% का ऑफ दे रहे हैं फिर चाहे वो प्रीलिम्स 2023 का क्रैश कोर्स हो या 2024 का फाउंडेशन कोर्स हो इस डिस्काउंट को पाने के लिए डिस्क्रिप्शन में दिए गए फॉर्म को आप फिल कर सकते हैं 
एम के यादव सर इंग्लिश मीडियम के टीचर हैं तो हो सकता है कि हम में से बहुत से लोग जो हिंदी मीडियम के स्टूडेंट्स हैं वो इस डिस्काउंट को अवेल ना कर पाए अगर आप एक हिंदी मीडियम के स्टूडेंट हैं और आप ऐसी किसी कोचिंग में पढ़ना चाहते हैं तो आप हमें उस कोचिंग का नाम बताएं और हम उनसे कांटेक्ट करने की कोशिश करेंगे हम ऑलरेडी बहुत सी हिंदी मीडियम कोचिंग से कांटेक्ट कर रहे हैं ताकि हिंदी मीडियम के बच्चे भी बेस्ट क्वालिटी एजुकेशन जो है वो अफोर्ड कर पाए तो चलिए साथ में मिलकर अपने आई बनने के सपने को पूरा करते हैं जय हिंद